Hey everyone, I'm AJ from Whole Latte Love, and in this video, I'm going to cover some tips and tricks to bring your single boiler espresso machine to the next level. The techniques I'll show can be done on stock machines without buying any upgrades, doing any modifications, risking damage to your machine, or voiding your warranty. Everything I'll talk about will apply to most machine-grade single boiler dual-use models on the market that contain actual water boilers, like the ones I have up here today the Gaja Classic Pro, Bedzera Hobby, Ranchilio Silvia, and ECM Casa 5. If you want to learn more about these specific machines, check out this video I made on the best premium entry-level espresso machines, also linked down in the video description. In the espresso world, pre-infusion is the process of gently soaking your ground coffee in the portafilter before introducing full pressure to the puck. This can help prevent channeling, allow fresh roasts to off-gas, let you grind finer, and bring out deeper flavors in your coffee. Pre-infusion can be performed on single boiler espresso machines that allow you to divert hot water out of the steam wand for Americanos or other hot drinks. To do it, grab a second cup and put it under your steam wand. After you've ground, tamped, and inserted your portafilter, slightly open your steam knob, then immediately hit your brew switch. This will reroute some of the water out of the steam wand rather than sending it all to the brew group. When you want the pre-infusion to end, simply close the steam knob and all of that water will go straight to the group, ramping up to full pressure for the rest of your shot. The more you open your knob, the more water will be redirected and the gentler the pre-infusion will be. Keep in mind though that doing a long pre-infusion or running a lot of water through the steam wand can lower your brew temperature so I'd recommend keeping your pre-infusion times on the shorter end. Maybe start by just opening your knob a quarter turn, pre-infusing for five seconds, and adjusting from there. Tips two and three are both aimed at getting you better steam performance. The goal of this one is to make your steam pressure last longer by continuing to heat the boiler while you're steaming. On this type of machine, to enter steaming mode, you normally flip a switch or press a button and wait for it to heat up to the higher temperature required to steam milk. Once it gets there, an indicator light will either turn on or off depending on your particular machine. This tells you that the boiler is up to steam temperature, at which point the heating element will turn off. As you're steaming your milk, especially in machines with a smaller boiler, the pressure will gradually drop off over time. But here's the trick, if you start steaming before the machine reaches full steam temperature, before that indicator light changes, the heating element will stay on while you're steaming, continuing to heat the remaining water in the boiler and force out steam at a higher pressure for longer. Because the heat up time varies from machine to machine, simply time how long yours takes between the time you flip the switch and when the light turns on or off. Subtract 10 seconds, and that's when you'll start steaming in the future. In a previous video, I ran performance tests doing this on the Gaja Classic Pro, and found that early steaming resulted in a 24% decrease in the time required to heat the same volume of milk to the same temperature. As always with this type of single boiler machine, remember to switch out of steam mode and refill the boiler after steaming to prevent damage to the heating element. The next tip for improving steam performance will help with both the pressure and the duration of your steam. It involves emptying out some of the water from the boiler while heating it up to steam temperature in order to make more room for the steam to fill and expand inside the boiler. Think of it like a tank sprayer. If I pump up and release a sprayer that's entirely full of water versus a sprayer that's half full and has more headroom for pressure to build up, the jet from the second one is more powerful and lasts much longer than the first. Now, obviously on your machine, you're spraying out the steam rather than the water, but the principle is the same. To do this, hit the steam switch or button to start heating. Put a spare container under the steam wand and open up the valve for five seconds without running the pump. The latent pressure inside the boiler will force some of the water out, creating more room inside. If you want, you can repeat this process one or two more times while waiting for the boiler to get up to steam temperature. Just give it a little time in between for pressure to build. You can also combine tips two and three to get the benefit of both. It'll just take a little coordination on your part. 
For example, on my ECM Casa 5, I know it takes around 80 seconds for the boiler to reach steaming temperature. One workflow could be, press the steam button and start a timer, open the valve for five seconds at zero, 20, and 40 seconds in. Then start steaming my milk at the 70 second mark. An added benefit is that this process can eliminate the need to purge condensation out of the wad before steaming your milk, since you've already removed that water through this process. When it comes to espresso, consistency is everything. In my opinion, temperature control or being able to adjust your temperature a couple degrees in either direction is generally less important than getting consistent temperatures from shot to shot. And that's one area where single boiler machines tend to fall behind their more expensive PID-driven siblings. Temperature on these machines is often controlled by an internal thermostat, which cycles power on and off to the heating element in the boiler. This cycle, however, can cause pretty wide swings in temperature, with the maximum often falling above your ideal brew temp and the minimum below it. Our goal when temperature surfing is to start brewing at the same point in the cycle each time for better consistency. The workflow involves timing your shot around your brew ready light, which will either turn on or off depending on your machine to indicate that it has gotten up to temperature. To avoid confusion, I'll explain the process on the Gaja Classic Pro, where the light turns on when it reaches brewing temp. After your machine is fully heated up and your shot is prepped, but before inserting your portafilter, Flush some water either through the group or out of the wand until your brew ready light turns off. Now, wait for your light to turn back on. On the Classic Pro, it takes around 15 seconds. This indicates the peak temperature at which the heating element will turn off and the temperature will slowly start to come back down. Wait 10 more seconds, during which time you can lock in your portafilter, then begin brewing. This process should get you a consistent starting temperature for each shot. But what if your shots are coming out sour and under extracted and you want to brew hotter? For starters, you can reduce that 10 second wait. Either start brewing after five seconds or right when the light comes back on. If this still isn't enough, wait for the light to turn on, hit your steam switch for a few seconds, turn it off, and then start brewing. This will trick the machine into thinking you're about to steam and raise the temperature a little extra. On the flip side, if your espresso tastes bitter and over-extracted and you want to lower the temperature, wait longer than that 10 seconds after the light turns on so the boiler temp can cool down a little more before brewing. Finding your ideal workflow will vary based on your equipment and preferences, so you may need to do some experimenting. Just find out works best for you and you should be able to repeat it with good consistency from shot to shot. If you have any tips that I didn't mention and you'd like to share, leave a comment below. And if you like this video, please consider hitting the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and come back soon for more of the best on everything coffee, brought to you by Whole Latte Love.